you were around here in those times in the early 1950s, you may remember seeing all kinds of Fords with a tag on them that said made in Texas by Texans. And the Ford plant was in Dallas. Uh, and it was driving General Motors nuts. Uh, and so they had decided to open a southern plant. So uh, Tom Vandergriff and his dad, Hooker, and uh, I'm not even going to get into the Hooker story, but at any rate, uh, they uh, decided they would try to persuade General Motors to put the plant in Arlington. Keep in mind, there's no 20, there's no 30. There's the Bankhead Highway. And uh, by the way, if you want to take the Bankhead from downtown Dallas to downtown Fort Worth, it's 82 red lights. Uh, so it is uh, quite uh, the journey. So the odds of this, we take General Motors for granted here. We really do. But the odds of General Motors deciding to come to a little podunk town with 7,800 people, uh, no interstate highway, but they did have the railroad going right next to it, are astronomically against it. But they decided to do it. They decided they would come here and open a plant that would make both automobiles and grooming aircraft. They never did make any grooming aircraft. Uh, but uh, uh, Tom decided if he ran for mayor, he'd be in a better position to persuade them. So he did run for mayor. He won uh, in 51. And uh, uh, by 53, the General Motors plant was being built. Uh, and then late 53, the first car, a 1954 black Pontiac Chieftain, there's that Pontiac again, rolled off the old uh, assembly line. Boy, I'd like to have that car now, wouldn't you? In fact, I, I'm, I'm on a public art committee from Meadowbrook Park, and I really think that if we could get a 54 Pontiac and paint that sucker black, and put it up on a pedestal somewhere, that it would be a terrific uh, piece of public art. It's not that easy to find a 1954 Pontiac, though, that somebody doesn't want a quarter million bucks for. Uh, so whatever. But at any rate, it, uh, that General Motors plant not only was a huge shock uh, to Arlington, it sent like shock waves through Texas, particularly te east and west Texas. Uh, I grew up 100 miles west of here, uh, and the main Ranching, sort of subsistence-like, farming, mm -hmm. on again, off again, oil and gas. Uh, and all of them are tough work, minimum wage uh, kind of stuff. And uh, when these guys in East Texas, and particularly West Texas, heard about this new General Motors plant going in, going to pay three times the minimum wage, got insurance, got retirement plans, got medical benefits, you know? got overtime, it kind of went bonkers. Now, from 1900 to 1950, what was happening in this country is everybody's leaving the farm to go to the big cities. 1950, they decided to help with the big cities. I'm going to the suburbs. And one of the first suburbs they started going to was Arlington. Part of this is because it's after World War II. Uh, it's after World War II. Guys are getting married, having children. They want a place with a yard. They want a car. Uh, they want all those kinds of things. Uh, and uh, aren't it close, but there's that General Motors plant. Uh, not only that, they're going to build this great Southwest Industrial mm -hmm. District out there. <coughs> Remember that 6,000 acre wagon or ranch? Well, a guy named Angus went and bought it. And he bought 3,000 more acres. And he started building what at the time was the largest uh, industrial uh, planned industrial park uh, in the country at the time, 9,000 acres, Great Southwest Industrial. So uh, pretty soon you got stuff going on in place. That thing ran into a lot of trouble, economic trouble, and uh, they had to find out some way to get more money in there. And one of the things that they came up with, Angus Wynn, Tom Vandergriff, others, was why don't we build uh, kind of a Disneyland or try to get Disney to come here? Uh, and Angus, well, that's crazy, but he went to Disneyland, he liked it. He just didn't like that you pay to get in, then you pay for the rides. So he came back here, decided to create this amusement park. His wife gave him the name Six Flags Over Texas. And one of those little flags on her desk with all these former Texas. Thank you pay one admission price, you go in, you have to pay for your pink things. Anybody been around long enough to remember pink things? Kind of an ice cream we deal. You had one? I liked them. You know, uh, but almost 
and that, and that opened in 61. <clears throat> I remember that because that was the year I graduated from high school. <clears throat> and I came up with my girlfriend and spent a lot of money on her and then she dumped me. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so I made the first summer uh, of Six Flags. And, uh, but almost instantaneously, Arlington's brand switched from General Motors plant, Great Southwest, industrial jobs to roller coasters, you know, uh, water slides, uh, all those kind of things. Because another thing is that by then they'd opened 30 in 1957. There was a turnpike then, uh, paid road. Uh, so, but the brand of the town switched almost instantaneously to this kind of roller coaster kind of place. Um, and frankly, um, it hasn't changed a lot uh, since then. You know, we just keep adding uh, more amenities in. Not everything that we that they did in the way of amusements worked. You know, uh, somewhere around 1970, I guess, no, 19, yeah, 1970, they decided to uh, try a water park. That was Tom Vanegar's idea. Probably the uh, only big failure he ever had. Anybody make uh, Seven Seas? Anybody go there? Besides me? No. You mean where the dolphins were? Yeah, one? yeah. Mm -hmm. And Nootka, uh, and uh, that yeah, so penguins on roller skates. Poncho, the sea elephant, the blue bowls. Uh, so they didn't want to compete with Six Flags, so, <clears throat> so they didn't put any rides in it. They had one ride in it. And uh, they discovered pretty soon that, you know, once you uh, teach a penguin to roller skate, that's sort of the end of its educational capacity. <laughs> yeah. And uh, same thing with Pancho, the sea elephant, uh, you know, he could blow bubbles with his giant pipe as long as you put the pipe in his mouth and you would give him a little bit of fish to do it. But uh, it, it finally ended up uh, uh, flopping. I noticed the same guy who designed uh, Seven Seas uh, designed Hurricane Harbor in there. He, he had all rides and no animals. <laughs> <laughs> the big attraction was the, uh, the killer whale. and. Uh, Nootka went up to uh, some place in Canada to a thing out there, and I, think, I saw, I think I died a few years back. Those things live long, uh, quite a long time. Uh, Six Flags, though, it became the top tourist draw in Texas. Uh, it's still the top paid tourist draw. What's the only thing in tourist attraction in Texas that draws more people? Alamo. Alamo, yeah, <laughs> and it's free. Uh, what'd you say? Huh? Okay. Uh, okay. There you go. So uh, uh, that really became kind of our big, our big brand uh, there. Uh, Hooker at one time uh, had owned kind of a minor league baseball team, and uh, or, and Tom loved baseball as well. And so they had this vision to bring baseball here, and they actually persuaded Lamar Hunt. You know who Lamar Hunt is? Yeah. You know. Uh, to bring a team to the area, and then, but then uh, Major League Baseball turned Lamar down. Uh, so uh, he didn't get to do the team. Finally, though, and Tom decided that the only way to get a team was to go get somebody else's team and, and uh, persuade them. And uh, there was a rumor that the uh, worst team in baseball, which was the Washington Senators, was for sale, uh, and that the owner, a uh, guy named Bob Short, was going to actually lose the team unless it could come up with 10 million bucks. So, uh, which doesn't sound like as much now uh, as it was then, uh, quite a chunk of change. And so uh, Tom calls him and says, ah, you know, if you're willing to think about relocation, I can get you your 10 million bucks. Uh, Short said, come on up. So he went up uh, to Washington, uh, talked to Short, and said, you know, we'll, we'll convert. We got a baseball field for you already. Uh, it was all metal minor league field, uh, out maybe 200 yards north of, uh, of where the, the current Globe Life Park is, 300 maybe. Uh, and they doubled the capacity of it from around 20,000 to <coughs> 35,000. It was all metal, you know, and uh, I originally lived not too far from it when I first moved to Arlington. And uh, on bat night, they, you could, everybody had these little bats, and you could literally hear it drumming for miles uh, out there. And they also had uh, nickel beer night. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we had, They had nickel beer night until two guys got so drunk they 
were incensed at a call and they jumped the fence and went over and beat up the first base umpire. <laughs> so, so that was the last of, of the uh, of the of the nickel beer. That was on TV. You know, I could see that. <laughs> Holy smokes, what are they doing? No, they're going to yeah, be there. Everybody's stunned. They're, they're, they're pummeling the, the umpire, and uh, before everybody figured, oh, well, this, this is not a joke. Uh, they got to do. So, very soon, of course, uh, uh, Arlington's brand was became baseball and roller roller coasters. Uh, didn't take very very long. long. Our, the team showed up uh, with uh, Ted Williams uh, as the coach, and uh, uh, the guy uh, was a great ball player, but uh, was a really kind of humorless. Uh, sourpuss of a guy, and, uh, and, and, uh, and he could have been a god here, but he just was too self-focused uh, for it to happen, so he left uh, after, after a year. But that really sort of made the town. By then, by the way, uh, by then, uh, 1970, I guess, 72, when they showed up, um, uh, Arlington's population was like 110, 120,000. And, uh, and everybody's going, you nuts, you can't support a baseball team with 120,000 people. And Tom was going, of course not. It's the same thing. It's got access, everybody, when you look at everybody who can get here in 25, 30 minutes, it's not 120,000, it's millions uh, of, of people. Uh, Team did okay. It's done. It's had its up and down fortunes. Uh, I think we may be in a down cycle <laughs> <laughs> at, at the moment. But uh, you know, they, uh, baseball's like that. It, it comes uh, and goes. Uh, probably, I think that would have. But the odds of that happening again are like General Motors, mm -hmm. uh, like that. Six Flags. Even Tom says, not once in our master plan did we ever think about. It being an amusement park uh, kind of place. You know, just the idea pops up, you jump on it, uh, it, it happens. You know, um, really, the Cowboys are like that too. In this particular case, the Cowboys have a stadium uh, that they don't like in Irving, which Irving has helped them to build. Uh, but in the, in, in the interim, from the time that originally Irving had helped them build it with their sales tax, Irving decides to join uh, Dallas Area Regional Transportation, which takes a penny of their sales tax. So when Jerry Jones started walking around with his hand out, uh, he discovered that Irving had wasted, wasted, I tell you, their money on mass transit. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and so then he goes to Dallas to try to get them uh, to do it. And then he runs, a, that time they had a, a really tough mayor named Laura Miller. Uh, and, uh, and they had a county commissioner, Don Lottie Price, uh, that was just an absolute difficult person. And both of them were difficult person. But in my view, the, what really turned Jones off from, from Dallas was that uh, about half of the city council there had their hand out. In fact, a couple of them eventually ended up in the pen for other kinds of handouts that they took. And I think Jerry finally figured out, one, the only place they were going to put it in Fair Park, and he didn't want to be in Fair Park. And two is that if he actually did work with them, he's going to end up in the pen himself. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, and in my view, he originally uh, started talking with Arlington just to go uh, Dallas into some sort of action. But when it really became clear that uh, working with Mayor Miller was difficult, working with Price was even more difficult, and that, uh, that uh, so many of uh, the Dallas council members were on the take that uh, he decided that maybe art is not such a bad thing. After all, he, he lowered his asking price for a, he wanted to build a billion dollar stadium. Uh, when he went to the then Mayor Cook, uh, he asked him, he says, well, I think I can do it for 650 and Cook says, well, we're good for half of it. Uh, by the way, can he do that? You can't do that, Not, but you, you can have an election, which is kind of what they did. They, uh, when they poll people, uh, and thing about good thing about Arlington, our bad thing is that uh, only about five thousand people show up at local elections, uh, and when they poll those people, they didn't want to pay for it. So what they did is they moved it to a 
national election in uh, November. And so instead of having, you know, eight, 10,000 people show up to vote, uh, they had 120,000 uh, show up to vote. And so they, sure enough, we passed for it just as we voted for the, uh, twice now for the expanded ballpark. Uh, people made fun of that. You would have to say probably, uh, they said, well, you only play eight or nine local home games, but uh, I am, Jones never thought he'd really make money. He probably said he didn't make money from the Cowboys now, but he does make money from the stadium. Uh, it's in use more than 100 times a year. Uh, concerts, revivals, I don't know, monster trucks, motorcycles, bull riding, just uh, all kind of stuff. And uh, it's uh, and the ta tax revenue has been growing so fast that they're probably going to pay it off um, several years quicker than they thought it would. Just as they uh, just as they paid off the, the original Grove Life Park uh, faster than they was. By the way, uh, uh, we built the first new ball ballpark with. Uh, George Bush, who was kind of become a flop in the oil, oil business, mm -hmm. 